Hey YouTube, welcome back to this edition of the Old Console Gamer. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to collect video games. I know there's lots of videos on YouTube that tells you how to collect video games, but none are going to be as uh, insightful as this series of DVDs that I'm about to show you. First off, I want to tell you a little bit about the creator. His name is John Hancock. He helps put on the Portland Retro Gaming Expo out here in the Portland, Oregon area. John is also an avid video game collector of over 20 years. John has an amazing assortment of games. Uh, you can go ahead and check out my uh, video with John that I did on my Ultimate Collector channel. It's a two-part video. So let's go ahead and jump into this DVD collection. It's called The Nuts and Bolts of Video Gaming. This here um, is the first volume. It's the obscure consoles of the 70s and 80s. This is the Nuts and Bolts of Video Game Collecting. This shows you everything on how to collect and what you should be looking for for systems like the APF, the Atari, the Bally Astrocade, Magnabox, RCA, and the Vetrex. Those are just a few. Uh, the, next, the next one in the set is the Nuts and Bolts of How to Collect Nintendo Video Games. This shows everything from the NES all the way up to the Virtual Boy. Uh, then the third is the Sega, uh, the, the Sega Library. The reason why I left this one third because this is actually a two disc set. Now John has also created a fourth uh, installment to this uh, set so make sure you check it out. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of each uh, DVD. I hope you enjoy it. And please, guys, make sure that you get a hold of John at 1swfan at hotmail.com so you guys can order these. These will be awesome Christmas gifts, either for yourself or any gamer that you know. At I mean, these are just fantastic. I have these in my library. I really want to thank John for giving these to me so I could go ahead and make a video of them. So guys, go ahead and enjoy. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Hi, my name is John Hancock, and I've decided to do a uh, video covering Nintendo home consoles, including the Virtual Boy. This video is a nuts and bolts covering uh, various system packaging, uh, games, and various accessories. Thank you for supporting this, and I hope you enjoy the video. These are examples of Nintendo Entertainment System um, package variations. Um, I don't have all of them, but I have uh, several. This obviously one of the first uh, versions of the box is the deluxe set, obviously with Rob, uh, Rob the robotic operational buddy, and then you have the power set, which came with the power pad, with uh, you know the triple cart, um, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt and uh, World Class Track Meet. Then you had the, uh, the classic package, which uh, had, um, we have uh, several, not all, of the wonderful accessories uh, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And uh, I'm going to do a brief overview uh, for collectors and players, kind of the nuts and bolts. Uh, the, the nuts and bolts in general is uh, they made several accessories and you don't need many of them. Um, several of the accessories for the uh, system. Uh, first up, the control pad. You technically, you know, if you bought this new, you would get two of these. Uh, all right, it was a tough decision but I have pulled out what I feel is the nuts and bolts of uh, the vast library of Nintendo games again this is a mere fraction of um, again of the entire library now uh, it was one of my uh, first uh, complete sets when I say complete I at least had a cart version of uh, at least a variant of, of every released licensed game. Um, but I just wanted to show you kind of a nuts and bolts. This is a standard Super Nintendo system box. 
um, which uh, gotta love those pack-ins back in the day. Two controllers and a game. And um, this is kind of a basic overview of uh, some of the what uh, Super Nintendo came bundled with. Obviously, you add your two Super Nintendo controllers, which uh, pretty good controller. Uh, AV cables, which they used for several systems. Uh, started with the Super Nintendo. Uh, proprietary AC adapter. Uh, smaller in size, more compact. Just a uh, small example of the uh, many accessories uh, for Super Nintendo. Um, and like Nintendo, uh, you don't mean, need many of them. Uh, <clears throat> sufficient, uh, most games just take the standard controller. However, there were um, several accessories made. Um, Super Scope 6, and um, you know, I had very limited support, had a couple games made for it. It obviously comes with a, uh, a, a demo of some of these games. Uh, <coughs> the, the unit itself had a connection to the TV uh, infrared. It is, I think, the best accessory. If there's one accessory I can recommend, it's this guy. And, you know, say goodbye to playing Game Boy games on a small screen. I've decided to put both uh, Sega portables that Sega did in the 90s together into one clip and call it Sega Portables. And this chapter we will be discussing the Sega Game Gear, followed up with the awesome Sega Nomad. And so we'll start with the Sega Game Gear. Sega Game Gear was... Uh, um, Competed with the uh, Game Boy and and some would say Game Boy Color of the time, and uh, it really was um, closest thing I can compare it to would be a uh, portable Master System, though the, the the engine was a little bit different. And uh, there is a lot to Game Gear. First things first is that there was many many accessories made for the system. Uh, I am showcasing just a few of them. Uh, there was a travel case. You could able to carry several games and accessories. And the accessories varied from uh, a magnifier. Um, some even had a magnifier and a light. Um, this funky device was a game genie. Um, obviously, with little books, you could uh, do codes on your system. This back then... system is not uh, specifically a Sega system, but due to the fact that it, so, it uh, played exclusive Sega games, they were only able to play on that system and was released in the U.S., I'm including it in this uh, DVD. Sega 32X. And this system was, uh, I consider it a system, even though it's technically an add-on to the Sega Genesis. Uh, had a very small library of games and essentially was a stopgap uh, um, so that uh, there would be um, time for the Sega Saturn to be released um, which was the next generation Sega unit. So this unit which uh, came out around mid 90's is uh, uh, uses the with the power of the Genesis able to create early uh, polygons uh, similar to uh, virtual racing as a good example virtual US Sega Saturn library is fairly small it does not contain uh, the hundreds of awesome import Sega Saturn games we do have our gems here and so I thought I'd cover uh, for the US Saturn what I thought would be interesting to talk about or to collect or to play. And, you know, before I start off on some very expensive games, I thought I'd show some that aren't expensive. 
And if you're looking for just a, a good all-around game and you like fighters, there's nothing wrong with Virtua Fighter 2. In fact, it's one of my favorite of the series. Uh, I've played countless hours of this, between this and Tekken 3. 9999 will stand out in my mind as one of the greatest uh, video game launches that I ever saw. Um, I worked at a GameStop back then and got to witness uh, Dreamcast from day one. And uh, the Sega Dreamcast is um, Sega's swan song. Uh, obviously, after the release of the Dreamcast, they exited hardware. But to me, will always stand as um, essentially what the Sega Saturn should have been like in the U.S. And I, I love the Dreamcast. I have a soft spot for it. And I'm here to overview hardware and accessories. And right there, that is... This is um, my Bally Astrocade collection. And it was uh, called several names. Uh, originally came out, I do believe, uh, in 1977 by mail order. Um, that version was called the Bally Home Library Computer. Also known as uh, Bally Professional Videocade, Bally Arcade, Astrovision, Bally Computer. Um, my version that I have that I plug in and play on a regular basis is the Montgomery Ward edition, which is white. Um, the nuts and bolts of this system is that um, typically with the wood grain like the Atari um, has a very, very unique um, shape to the, to the, the console itself. Up next is the Coleco Telstar Arcade. Now the quick rundown of this Pong slash console is it was a late release uh, Pong unit uh, that came out after uh, cartridge based systems uh, uh, were becoming popular after the Atari came out. So essentially 